Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to take a look at the foliage filter found in Nick 8 Color Effects. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I'm highlighting one of the most intuitive tools in Nick 8 Color Effects, the foliage filter. If you're working with a lush landscape, a garden scene, a forest view, this filter zeroes in on the greens and gives them a vivid, almost cinematic boost. It's all about taking natural color and making it pop without losing any of the realism. Let's dive in and explore how a touch of foliage finesse can breathe new life into your image. I have two different examples for you. I'm working out of Photoshop. I have this image as well as this one, and we'll run the foliage filter on both. And let's see if we can bring some new life into these images. I'll click on this C, and this opens up the Nick 8 Color Effects Photoshop panel, and I'll click Open. We'll launch Color Effects and get started. And now here we are in Color Effects. On the left hand side of the interface, we see all of our different filters here, and they're all in alphabetical order. To find a filter fast though, you could come up here to search and just type in the name of the filter. I'll type in foliage and there's the foliage filter. We can just click the plus and that adds the filter. This filter is so easy to use. We have a method and then we have a slider called enhance foliage. It defaults at 50. So if you take this to the left, you can decrease the amount of the effect move it to the right to increase the effect. I'm using the side-by-side -side view, so the image on the left is the original image, the image on the right is the affected image. If you want to fill the screen with your image, click this button right here, and then to see before and after, just left click and hold down, you'll see the before, release the click, there's the after, or you could click this button and get a split compare. So on the left side, is the original on the right is the affected image and then you can drag this slider across but i'm going to use the side by side view so i'll click here right now we see the original on top the affected on the bottom if you click this circle now we have the original on the left and the affected on the right for these videos i'm using side compare so we can always see the before and after if you're continuing to enjoy this view let me know in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you if you're enjoying these videos where I'm going through all of the filters and Nick Color Effects, please like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Now let's look at method. This is a drop down, so we're going to click right here. Right now we're on method one. Now, if you hover over the different methods, you can see the change on the image. There's method two, and here's method three. So you could decide which one do you like the best one, two, or three. For this image, I think I like three the best. We're getting a nice, beautiful, vibrant green. So I'll click on three. And now I'll take the enhanced foliage slider. I'll drag it the whole way off. And then I'll start to slowly drag that slider to the right and stop at a point where I think it looks the best. And I think maybe right about here looks pretty darn good. Now again, the image on the left is the original. The image on the right is the affected image. Now, at this point, if you want, you could send the image back to Photoshop as a layer. And to do that, click Send as Layer. That sends a layer at this state back to Photoshop. Now you'll note I'm getting a warning here. This is just saying layers are created upon closing the plugin. Multiple layers may require more processing time. It's just letting you know when you send it back to Photoshop, it might take a little longer to process. If you don't want to see this again, just click do not show again. And then just click OK. And when you close color effects, the image at this state will be applied to Photoshop as a layer, along with any other layers you would happen to send back to Photoshop. For instance, let's say I come and click on method again, and let's go to method one, method two. Let's try method two. And again, I'll take this enhanced foliage slider the whole way to the left, and then just build it up slowly and stop where I think it looks the best. And maybe, maybe right about here. Now we could send this back as another version, come down here and click on send as layer. And that sends that back as a layer to Photoshop. Now, remember that won't happen until we close color effects. I'll click the method drop down again and I'll click on one this time. Just for the heck of it, let's send this one back to Photoshop also. That way we have three to compare. Let me go and adjust this first. I'll take the slider the whole way off and then I'll build it up slowly again and stop where I think it looks good. And I think maybe right about here. I almost forgot to tell you about the opacity adjustment slider. If you take this slider and drag it to the left, you'll start to blend some of the original image in with it. 
which is a nice way of fine-tuning the image. Now, I don't do that because when I send this layer back into Photoshop, I do have a layer opacity adjustment that I could do the same thing. But if you're using this as a standalone app, this adjustment can come in very handy. And now that I'm done here in Color Effects, this time, I'm not going to click Send as Layer. I'll click Apply. That'll send this back to Photoshop. And now all those other layers will be made. And as you can see, they're being made right now. And that's all in real time. So that's how long it takes, at least on my computer, which is a fairly late model Mac Studio. I'll click this C button. That closes the color effects panel just to get it out of the way. Right now, you're seeing the original image. I went ahead and renamed my layers and repositioned them. We're seeing method one on this layer, method two, and method three. This way we can compare them all and then pick the best one. Let's start out with method one. Let me go ahead and turn it on. Here's method one. I'll shut it off. There's before, there's after. Here's method number two. Let me shut it off. Here's before and here's after. And now here is method number three. I'll shut it off. Here's before, here's after. Which one do you think? Do you like one, two, or three. They're all looking pretty nice, and I think I still like three the best. But let me know in the comment section which one do you like the best. Do you like one, two, or three? Now for three, I think it's a little too strong, so what I'll do is take its layer opacity, drag it the whole way off, and then just build it up slowly and stop where I think it looks the best. And I'm thinking maybe right about here. Let me shut it off. Here's before, here's after. But I love this foliage filter. I have one more example for you. To save some time, I already opened up color effects from Photoshop and I've applied the foliage filter. We're on method number one at the default setting for enhanced foliage of 50%. That looks really good. And now let's try method two. Here's method two. Well, I don't like that one as much. And here's method three. I think it's a little too green. So for me on this image, I'm pretty sure it's going to be method one. So let's click on method one. I'll take the enhanced foliage slider and drag it the whole way off. And now let's just build it up slowly and stop where we think it looks good. And I like it maybe right about here. You know what? I think I need a little bit more. I'm going to take it up to right here. I think that's good. What do you think? The image on the left is before, the image on the right is after. Remember, once I send this to Photoshop, I can always ease off on the layer opacity, or we could do it right here in color effects. I'm happy. I'm not going to do any more experimentation in color effects, so I'll just go ahead and click apply and send this back to Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. Isn't that beautiful? I love the way it works with the yellows and the greens. That is gorgeous. Again, if the effect is too strong, take the layer opacity, take it the whole way off, build it up slowly and stop where you think it looks the best. And I like it maybe right about here. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Man, I really like that. If you've never used the foliage filter in Nick Color Effects, please give it a try. I think you're really going to like it. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial looking at the foliage filter found in Nick 8 Color Effects. I'm continuing this journey through all of the Nick filters found in Nick Color Effects. Hey, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.